Hey guys, it's Vivian Vincent and welcome back to another video. And it's going to be another episode of my How I series. And in this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to, well, how I basically got 120 in engineering. I'm going to be going over a couple of things regarding, you know, some little techniques and stuff that I use to get 120 in engineering. Um, what you should be doing before dungeons, after dungeons, during dungeons, uh, what you should be doing at the start of dungeons, um, you know, which paths to take. Uh, where your gatestone should be, and you know, just just some brief stuff. Now, a quick uh, disclaimer. Now, by no means am I the best dungeoneer. Um, I know a lot. I know a lot of people that are a lot better than me. Um, but obviously, I'm 120 dungeoneering, so I know a little bit about dungeoneering. Um, and hopefully, this will help you guys with you know just um, just some basic stuff, just to hopefully help you guys with uh, getting some dungeoneering experience. Um, and this lovely dungeoneering cape is absolutely fantastic. You know, I was going to wait till I get my completionist cape. Um, I was going to leave 120 Dungeoneering until after I got my Completionist Cape, but obviously I'm still one requirement off Completionist Cape, and that requirement is one Refocus Scroll, so I'm still, I'm still working on that. Uh, but at this stage, um, the 120 Dungeoneering Cape is here to stay, um, so obviously it's not Keepsake, because I, I could Keepsake my Dungeoneering Cape, but why bother when I'm going to be get, Keepsaking my Completionist Cape? So I'm going to chuck that back in the bank, and we're going to start off be, um, by saying something about Overloads and Perennials. Now, um, it's not really a necessity to have prayer renewals, to be honest. Overloads are the main thing. Now, the reason why you overload at the beginning of the dungeon is obviously it's a given. You get more DPS when you do guardian doors and things like that. But another one is, um, for example, if you if you are confronted with a room in which you need 99 strength for, for example, if you're playing with a team of maxed uh, maxed players, for example, and everyone has 99 attack, strength, defense hit points, you know, max combat, and you get to, for example, a barrel room um, within the first five minutes of the dungeon. You really need um, you need a, you need to ensure that you have obviously the combat stats to actually complete the room. Now, generally, with some rooms when you're running around the dungeon, you'll get confronted with mages that will lower your stats, and that's basically the main reason why you overload before. Uh, dungeon. So what I'm, gonna, I'm not going to overload for this, just for the purpose of the video, because I'm going to show you quickly what I do at the beginning of the dungeon. So you always want to open your interface and set the floor, as well as uh, the complexity before you even enter the dungeon. Uh, and that's personal preference. You can always climb down the dungeon entrance and then set the floor and the complexity, but I always make sure I do it before I even hit the climb down button. But when you're in a party of five, uh, you want to choose the uh, difficulty as five and the large dungeon just for the maximum experience. And then you hit enter dungeon. Obviously, I'm just by myself, so I can't actually choose those two options. But when you, as soon as you get in the dungeon, if you've done the Dungeoneering Elite tasks, you'll be able to right-click the Smuggler and hit Claim Reward. And upon doing that, you'll be able to get 40 Law Runes and 40 Cosmics Runes. Now, that is crucial when it comes to um, using Personal Gate Stones. And I've already forgotten to do something, and that is actually move my little magic, uh, my magic ability bar, I guess you could call it, down here. Now this is the best. This is the best setup I like using, making the making the little rectangle um, vertical rather than horizontal, and making it basically as small po as small as possible. But I like to have it in the bottom left area of the middle middle of the screen. Now what I do is, like I've just said at the beginning of the dungeon. You want to be claiming the rewards from the smuggler, so you get the lore runes um, and cosmic runes. However, sometimes, I guess some, some of you can't actually um, do that, so I recommend just going over here. I'm getting two, um, two maximum of three items from the bench, um, and then quickly you want to sell them real quick. Okay, so once you've sold these as well, if you don't have any runes, you basically just want to um, scroll all the way down to the bottom. So it's every time you open the smuggler, you always scroll down to the bottom no matter what. And the reason you do that is because firstly, if you don't have the runes to begin with after completing the elite tasks, you want to buy rune essence, so whether it be 50, um, if, if you can afford 250, I recommend doing that. Um, but you also want to be buying feathers as well. Now the reason you buy feathers, I can't actually afford 10 feathers at the moment, but generally you'll be able to afford uh, some feathers as well. So don't buy, don't spend all your money on rune essence because feathers are, um, well, feathers can be as crucial as rune essence, I guess, but it's probably better to actually purchase your feathers before your rune essence. That's what general. That's what I would do. Um, so you quickly buy your ten feathers, buy your rune essence, um, and now what I would do is I always make the red gate stone first. Um, you can choose. It's all, it'd be a wise idea to choose the actual uh, green gate stone. And what, the reason why you do that is because obviously the red one requires no runes, and the green one requires some sort of rune. So if you're going to be getting, if you're going to be getting home. Um, you know, it depends on the dungeon, really. You could be teleporting home a lot, or you couldn't be telling teleporting to home a lot. I don't know. It all it all depends on the dungeon layout. 
But uh, it, it, it depends on what you guys like. If you have the red one, I just recommend just dropping the red one down here. Um, and then you, know, you can always teleport back to home. Now, the reason why you um, get home is, for example, if I'm... It depends on the map. See how the map is in generally in the middle? Um, well, see how this map is in the middle of the, um, I guess, the map. Uh, if you guys are pathing north, and let's say the home door is a skill, not a skill door. If it's a key door, um, and the key is only, the key is only obtainable if you go north, for example. Uh, what you want to be doing is you want to go north until you get the key, and you've also got to teleport back to um, back to the home. Now. That's that's a given. Obviously, um, gating a door in which you need to open. Obviously, this isn't it. You, you know, you've got two different doors here. Um, but let's say, for instance, you've got a couple of doors down here in the bottom left, and you've got some guy pathing in the bottom right. Let's say there's a door openable in the bottom left, and there's a key door, for example, green wedge, and you're pathing north with a gate stone, and you pick up the green wedge key. This guy is obviously pathing down southeast, so he can't actually path southwest, and you've already got home gated, so all you have to do is teleport back to home, um, and then run southwest as well. So, at the so uh, I'm just going to give you a quick recap on that. What you want to be doing is uh, claim reward, trade, feathers, and rune essence, and then open your map as well. It's really, really crucial that you open map. Now, when you ever, when you ever hear people um, telling you to open your map, there's a reason why they do it. Now, there's no, um, there's no point in just opening your map just for the hell of it every now and again and not taking any information in. The reason why you open the map is to get your bearings of where you, whereabouts you are in the dungeon. So, for example, if I'm going to be opening this, opening this door real quick, just open the door and then see. Obviously, there's nothing, um, nothing north. And this is a perfect example of why I should get home as well because instead of running back through the door, all I have to do is teleport back to home create the gate stone and drop it. Now you can also, if you're, if you're ever going to drop the gate stone, I recommend just dragging it into the middle of the screen. It really, really does help. Um, and I'm obviously going to keep uh, home gated because I've got purple pen door here. But if I'm going to be running south as well, there's probably going to be multiple doors to be opened in here. And this is just the one. Another quick trick as well, you can always just drop a gate stone by the door. And as you run and collect the key, you can always run back. And instead of running back to the door, you can always teleport back. But that's if, it depends if you're lazy or, um, or whatever situation you're in. But a couple of notes as well. If you're on a complexity six dungeon, you'll be confronted with doors in which you um, doors like skill doors, for example. So if you've got prune vine, or you've got like the burning logs one, or like the agility, like the disarm door. Um, if you're on a critical path, you'll get an XP drop of 460 um, or higher, of course. So if you get an XP drop of like, for example, 500, then you're on a critical path. Um, now, a lot of people um, fall, you know, under the trap of you have bonus experience in the skill. So if I've got some agility bonus experience and I open a disarm door and it pops up with uh, 890 experience, for example, um, you know, obviously it's above 460, so it could be a critical path. But uh, obviously, I think I said 860, so that's 430 divided by 2. Oh, 860 divided by 2 is 430. Um, so that's not going to be a critical path. Uh, generally, there is a big difference between um, the 460 XP drop and the lower XP drop. So you probably get like a 200 or a 300 XP drop as opposed to like a 400 plus XP drop on a critical path. But... Um, if you, if you, if some instances you'll actually have some bonus experience in your skill, what you want to be doing is just looking for the bonus experience. So obviously you've got the total experience. For example, if I get a thousand XP drop, I'll have a thousand on the left, and in brackets I'll have five hundred. So you want to be looking at that five hundred to see how much XP um, you gather from the door, and that will be able to tell you whether it's a critical path or not. Um, now for you guys um, that don't know what a critical path is, you essentially the critical path is the path needed to find the boss. So um, every key, all the keys you pick up on the critical path will basically be um, keys you need to open the doors to find the boss. And that's that's essentially the uh, main gist of the critical path, I guess. That's, that's all I've gathered for 120 Dungeoneering as well. I'm sure there's other in-depth ways, but I'm not going to confuse you because it's already a nine-minute video, which is uh, which is pretty crazy already. There's so much to cover in a Dungeoneering video. But also, if you're the keyer as well, you want to be mate, you want to be dragging the gate stone in a direction that has the most potential. Now, for example, if I was on screen here, my the home base and my character, I guess, is is more north than south. So I would safely say that there is more potential south than there is north, because firstly there's a dead end, um, and southeast there just seems to like to be more potential. Is if this was a large door, um, the potential is probably if you can see my mouse is it'd be like maybe in the bottom whole left uh, bottom right hand. Uh, half of the screen, but if I were to go north, you know, it's got some sort of potential there. But then dungeons have the um, dungeons have the potential just to do whatever the hell they want because this this could go up this door. This could probably like maybe go up north, north, east, east, and they could probably go south again and then dink out or something like that. Because sometimes dungeons are really really crazy. Um, 
But if you have any questions about Dungeoneering, feel free to let me know in the comments below, and I should be able to answer them. Um, if I don't know the answer to them, I'm going to look up, uh, you know, hopefully, I'm going to try and look look up some answers for you guys, and, you know, speak to a couple of people um, to hopefully answer those questions for you guys, because then I'll be able to, it'll be able to help me with Dungeoneering as well. Um, but hopefully you did enjoy this video. If you did, let me know with a like and a comment and stuff. Um, but apart from that, guys, hopefully you did enjoy this video, and I'll see you in the next one.